doesn't matter whether you love scooters, mopeds, big bikes, tourers, sports bikes, or adventure bikes, cars, vans, lorries. You can't help but admire a Ducati. Now I know there's lots of Ducatis you can look at. But when it comes to an all-round adventure bike, this has got to be one of the most beautiful bikes to have. From the front, it's just got that beautiful look. The single swing arm at the back with the twin pipe exhausts or this very beautiful dash which I'll show you in a little while head and all controls has to be a Ducati Hi Mark Savage here and welcome to my channel an unusual start but a beautiful bike to start on now if you watched my previous video you realise that my start to this bike wasn't brilliant however it's got better went round it all the bolts check this out Another bolt would have come out. Not as major as the other one. Still not good, is it? I mean it was serviced from main dealer Ducati a few miles ago. Previous owner, Ducati who'd you moan at? So many bolts coming off of this wasn't brilliant, loose bolts. It's not that much vibration to make them that loose. Anyhow, what a beautiful bike. Ducati Multistrider 1200S. Now, if you look at the colours, I found this very unusual. It's the Pikes Peak. Now, there's a lot about this Pikes Peak Hill. It's, um, well, we don't call it a hill, more like a mountain, and a guy just races the nuts out of this Ducati, and he won three times out of the four times he went up there over the four years. This one is reverse colours, done by main dealer. That's why it's unusual, and that's actually why I loved it. I like the white front of it rather than the black nose and the red. Original I heard Pikes Peak, I thought it was sort of Peaky Blinders, you know. Arthur, you know what I mean. No more voices. But yeah, I did think it was Peaky Blinders of some description. I don't know. <laughs> we haven't got that mountain, as I like to call it, the hill challenge here in England. So I've watched a few videos of this, and he just floors it. Now, I believe this was a standard Model S, and then if took off the bits and bobs. If you watched my last video, I had the carbon screen I've taken that off and I've put the clear screen back on. A few less flies in my face. It has got all the upgrades except the exhaust. What he has done though, is taken the butterfly out and put some sort of command on there so it still runs very well. They give it a bit of a diet so they take things off like this. I actually quite like it back on there. The centre stand and other bits and bobs. But I actually think, but I actually think this definitely would have had panniers. Because if you look at the bolt marks here and through there, you can see that they are tarnished. So meaning it did have panniers. And possibly a back box as well, because I've got three locks key the like. But I don't know, I was gonna put a back box on it, I don't think I'm going to, it just looks too beautiful. Now the dash on these are amazing. Um, and what they put in this technology here. I mean, in the day, you know I've had BMW GSs. They've been linked at the end. And I like my GSs, but they're heavy, not that fast, 
not that you need to be that fast anyway, but everybody raves on about the engine and how brilliant they are. But for me, being a short arse and they're about 850 seat height, these are down to 825, which is so much better for a short arse like me with a 30, 29 inch leg. So I prefer this. However, the brake horsepower is just phenomenal. 160 brake on a beautiful engine like this um, twin does go some. The torque is phenomenal. In any gear, you really do know it's there. Hydraulic clutch, lots and lots of gadgets. And I said, this has got wheelie control, dynamic control, ABS, blah, the, the systems go on. And I think I'll have to do probably a video of all what this dash does, because you can change hundreds of settings. And I don't just mean like some do winter mode and rain mode and so on. I mean, this has got touring, enduro, and each setting has a sub setting that you can change all the little bits from one to eight as well. Personally, I'm not gonna mess around with it. Um, I'm gonna get used to the bike as it is. I'll leave it in touring, you get the full 160 brake, same as the Sport. The Sport's a lot harder. This is nice and cushiony. It pretty much rides like a GS with the straight bars. You feel upright and on the road. It's got more power. The other two modes, I think you're down to 100 brake horsepower. And that's still gonna be an awful lot for one of these bikes. Um, at the end, I'm gonna put a link in. I had a Prilia De Capano or De Capano or 1200. I was really unimpressed with that. Um, but that was my first adventure bike. Now I've got very much more used to these. Now when we were searching these bikes, there were a few videos of this. There's some Australian geezer. Maybe I've got to stop doing the um, accents. A lot of foreign ones that I couldn't understand, obviously. And other ones where they've gone to shows and they just blared out some music and just looked around the bike. So what you're going to get today is obviously we had a look round, me chatting ride through my tunnel which i do love and actually a vlog on the back of this as well what it's like to ride i would say okay triumph 800 you know i've got one i do like it it feels like it's been built in a shed by a guy who really cared about it really slowly everything's done up properly they are great bikes to ride this is more like your supercar very tetchy the clutch is hydraulic and you can stall it quite easy. If you're not in the right gear, she chudders, and if you're in a too high a gear, she feels like she wants to take off. And you can easily wheelie these. Don't tell the wife. I tried to convince her that it was only like silly brake horsepower, but um, she knew I was uh, fibbing. <laughs> it's a good job she doesn't watch my videos. Or you know what'll be happening now. I'd get one of those slaps in the back of the head, wouldn't I? <laughs> I should take that out. <laughs> right, 20 litre tank, normal 17 inch wheels. Um, there's a Metzler on here, and I'm going to stick to them. When I got their uh, private buyer, Dave um, Swindon, yeah, I didn't have a good word to think about him the other day when I broke down with M4. Yeah, and no, I didn't. But. I can't really blame him, can I, you know? I looked at the pictures as well, and you can see the bolts loose, even on the pictures. I zoomed in on them. Front tyre is mega low, down to 1.7-ish. So that will pass an MOT, it would be an advisory. And I wasn't going to stick to the same brand tyres, because the back tyre is really good. Yeah, front tyre very low, and the back tyre's got enough tread on it. But I've decided I will, not for cost, because they're all about 200 and odd quid. Um, but I'm going to stick to the tyres that came with it for once. It handled so well with them, I didn't want to put some cheaper tyres on there. I'm using Continental Contiflow. These are Rotec, Metzler Rotecs on here. Um, M7s I think they are, so I'm going to stick with them because that's what they suggest to use on here. Got the crash bungee, which is really, really nice. I do like the decals on it. It is just, well, it's lovely. Mirrors are brilliant. Um, but say, riding it, getting used to it, that's what it's like. Well, I was mentioning about the supercar. Um, they're tetchy. You, know, you have to get used to the bike. It's not the bike's fault, it's the way they're designed. But when you're doing 70 mile an hour, if you need to get out of trouble, you really, really can. And it doesn't lurch and all over the place. Um, and so you can change the modes on this, which is quite nice. Starting isn't as bad as the Mark 1. As you know, I had the Mark 1 and I loved it. I did like it a lot actually. It had a MIVI exhaust on it, it sounded like a monster. As I said, the guy's taken a baffle bit out of this, the um, butterfly, and he's put some sort of power thing on here as well, so it doesn't muck around with ECU. Um, he's also changed the cogs 
He's also put some super sprocks on here. So he's changed the front cog and the rear cog and the chain. Now, I'm never sure if you take one out from the front and add one at the back or vice versa, but that's what he's done with this. Supposedly, it makes it a lot more comfortable. Well, I don't know about that because I've done all it rode like before, but it does ride like, just like the Mark 1. And you do get this false neutral between fourth and fifth. The other Ducati did it, this one does it as well. Whether I've got to adjust it, I don't know. I might have a play with that later, but at the present minute, I do keep getting this false neutral if I'm pushing it. Riding slowly, you don't get nothing and it's fine. Anyway, let's do it. look. Ugh. Anyway, let's look at the dash. Usual switch, push and hold. That didn't work, why? Because it's keyless and the key is in my jacket. Da da. So let's look quickly at the dash, but you do need the key. Proximity, although this isn't. And the Mark 1 was, which I'm glad actually, because I kept them to get the key out of the pocket anyway. So by pressing this, and there it is, very, very pretty. Traction control and all the other little bits and bobs it has on here and ABS. Now this is the S, so you get a lot more. And what I do like about this dash, you go for a tunnel or nighttime, inverts, so you can still see it. That's very clever. And push and start. menu buttons here and this one's a touring bit where you as I said got all these defaults and preloads and everything else the old one used to flick down and flick up and the start button was hid anyway as loads more technical data I'll probably do another video of about the I said the 825 seat up to 845 they come with panniers and all the extra bits they cost a lot of money you know if you want to add them um, so you get different versions the 1200 1200s and then you get the touring it's got fog lights and so on but this one is, say, the reverse Pikes Peak version of it that the person did, or the main dealer did for them. And it's a nice bike. Now, let's get to the tunnel and listen to what it sounds like, and I'll get back on and have a little ride with you as well. and yet the agility to get in and out of spaces you wouldn't have normally thought you could have. If you're looking for an all-round package bike that has everything on the team, but you've got to get used to, this is the baby that will do it. I think it's time now for us to get on the road, do a little vlog of this very, very yummy bike. One more look around it, and let's get on it. So one last look out of the darkness and into the light. What a beautiful looking bike. This they really designed so well. You know, I keep seeing our videos of people just playing music and you don't need the music, you probably don't need me chatting shit either, but never mind. I don't know why they've upped this to a 1260cc, 160 brake. I mean, what more can you get? It's just beautiful. So, no more chatting. Let's get on the bike. And away we go. Hopefully now, very nice seating position for you. Let me come around this nice little bend. It is something I'm just getting used to again. 
halfway on this little B road here and then join the main bit and go home. As you can uh, hear, <laughs> the acceleration of pigeons, no, the acceleration here is just phenomenal. It's just beautiful. So light and agile, I mean, just left and writing here. Warming the tyres up because I might have got a little bit of dirt on them. A couple of cyclists. You know, I was going to say earlier that no one could not love a Ducati except these two guys in Lycra. But then again, that'd be quite cruel because I know some of you uh, may also like cycling. But I don't. Well, because of my knees are knackered. Anyway. She's very nice, third gear, there's no huge thundering exhaust like I had on the other Mivi exhaust but if you want to open her up you get an absolute lovely growl out of her so this roundabout I'm going to come to now will open her up Cyclist Now the screen, let's put it up a tiny bit to be honest with you, the carbon fibre one did absolutely nothing this is a million dollars compared to the one we had on here but still nowhere near as good right second gear nothing coming let's go round this roundabout nothing on the tires cougars in front of me and let's say kill a cougar third fourth and there we go, that missing fifth gear. Do you see it? How bloody annoying is that? That's so annoying. I keep getting this frigging false neutral from fourth to fifth. That's just taking it completely away from saying what a wonderful acceleration it was. And wonderful noise. I mean, all right, let's have a little play with the old gear shift. But I mean, it goes up and all the other gears lovely, so why does it keep missing there? Anyhow, lovely seating position. Absolutely no pain on your back, on your knees, your arms, nothing. It's just beautiful. Goes down the gears lovely as well. Let's let this Audi go along here. In second gear, she plops away. Nicely indicate, arm out. Thank you very much. And just, you know, smooth, lovely grunt. Except for the bloody false neutral. And it is funny, I had this on the Mark 1. Anyone else got any Ducati Multistradas out there? If you test ride them or you've got one, tell me, am I the only bugger that's getting this? And maybe I really have to push up to get into that fifth gear, I don't know. But anyway just smooth and I mean it really does feel very very light for a big animal she does feel very very light now it's got wheelie control on here so uh, that's good I'm not sure if it's on or off but I'm not popping wheelie so I'm gonna say it's off <laughs> no wait a minute I say it's on <laughs> I reckon if you floored this it'd be quite hard to keep it down but uh, in sport mode I reckon because the suspension's a lot stiffer but in the touring mode I'm in now, it is lovely, absolutely lovely. Look at this little bit of overbanking there, Whee! it's just absolutely gorgeous. I was trying to back away from these cars a little bit. I mean, third gear, 36 miles an hour, it's nothing, it's just gorgeous. So you can still pull away, you know, it feels as though it's just a monster, which is beautiful. And yet you can just knock it down the gear and you can cruise. You know, fourth gear, cruising along very, very nicely. As I said, the dash on this is really, really good. You've got everything you need, outside temperature, miles per gallon, what you've got left, your miles. And it's got some Bluetooth little gizmo. I couldn't really figure that out. I mean, it's got a Bluetooth that you can connect Ducati headphones to. I mean, why would you connect your phone to the bike and then the bike to your headphones when you can just put your phones straight to your headphones. I'm stuttering to think how to explain it easier. Um, <laughs> it's got no radio on it, no information there. I was wondering whether you could actually attach it to your phone and get some specs and stuff, but 
I haven't read this huge manual, and I mean it's really, really big. I haven't gone through the manual yet. So maybe when I do, I'll know a bit more. And I'm wondering, maybe I should be flooring it one, two, three, four, and then come off into fifth gear to go in nicely. Maybe I shouldn't push it into fifth. I mean, I don't know. She does pop, pop, pop down the gears as well, if you uh, go down quite heavy. It's just got a lovely sound to it, really. I would have uh, opened up a little bit here, but there's push bikes and all sorts of people, so let's be nice. Well, that looks really painful, that cycling. Anyway, there she goes. A little vlog, you know, I'll do a much longer ride, a better vlog, on a lovely Sunday afternoon. Thank you so much for watching my uh, video today. Please do check out the other videos on the uh, Mark 1 Ducati. I'm going to put the uh, Aprilia on here as well actually, and a BMW at the end. So, uh, after my little muck-ups, I always add them in. I mean, whether you like them or not, I just don't always get it right. So I haven't put the specs in today. Just the basics. And they are all you need, really. 20 litre tank, 160 brake horsepower, more settings and, and bits and bobs you can do than any bike I've ever been on. Styling and looks and comfortability, power, you have it all in the Ducati Multistrada. And they're not mega money, you know? If this was a 65 plate BMW, it'd be a lot, lot more money than what I pay for this. I've got a good little deal on this, and I've got to sort out a few little bits, which is the tyres, and add on the things I wanted to. Screen, yeah, I'm happy with it. It keeps it off my face. I don't know about the open face helmet so much yet. I'll have a go at that and see what it's like. Right. Like, share, subscribe. Let me know what you think of the video. Let me know what you think of the bike. And I will catch you down the world. Yeah, I've been watching Steve Austin. Open Skull Challenge. <laughs> Laters! Whee!